My name is Shalina Delgar, and I'm with the Neil Squire Society, an organization that supports Canadians with disabilities through education, employment opportunities, and digital literacy. And I say that because you're going to see some of the examples brought up over here on applicable and tangible ways in, in which to uh, support donor stewardship and some fundraising tools. So best practices from the field. So in, in our organization, we put about a five to seven touch point system and into how we're actually going to reach out to them, similar to the calendar, but what that actually looks like, actually the calendar, and then looks like when we, do we actually reach out to them and on what occasion and what is it that we're using to connect with them. So first things out of the way, getting all the relevant stakeholders out um, on board and making sure, as Sarah mentioned, there's no overlap, everybody signs off. There might be a financial implication in terms of stewarding uh, these donors if you're sending them any packages or you're hosting an event. So you want to make sure everybody's on board and not halfway in the campaign. Then they're like, well, what's, we didn't know this. Segmenting and talking about, sorry, finalizing what those methods will look like. And it's actually interesting for us. We got our program team to talk about ways that they could, they view stewardship once we defined it for them. And it was interesting what they thought they, they could do, which was really neat because it's being creative. And I would have never thought that sitting in the, the development corner of our office or in this case home now. Segmenting donors into uh, different groups of, uh, into uh, their donations, but also knowing that you, there's got to be a bit of leniency and how they like to be communicated. Some people don't like phone calls. Some people love phone calls. And so just really getting to know. And then examples include virtual coffee and teach a signature events. So we had one which was the Guinness World Record of building assistive technology devices and that rallied in all our, our donors and, and, and brought in that. Virtual tech and learn um, sessions we used to do in person and now virtually about how to support Canadians with disabilities. And then celebrating the Mother's Day, uh, Father's Day, talking about donor love and maybe sharing a story about Mother's Day and some of the, the impacts that our work has had on single mothers. Be mindful, life happens, read the rooms. If there's a pandemic and you're asking them for money, this may not be a good time or it might be a difficult time to make that call. So just being mindful of that. And then the other um, last point I'll make is on fundraising trends. And I'm always cautious using trends because that's not to say in, Eli's going to organize another event in 2023, which I hope so. And, gonna, and we're going to now talk about trends for 2023 only. Uh, but these are things to just be mindful of. So mobile apps, if you haven't started to talk to your development team and your CFO about how to create donation web pages on your phone, which you can actually then put in some programs about what you're doing in different parts of your um, programmatic work. So they can also read along the way. Cryptocurrency, as was mentioned earlier, this is an area that Canadian law will have to keep up with and talk to your CFO. In some cases, your CFO may only be a little bit weird. So it's important that you actually bring them on board because your donors may ask. And the last thing you want to be is caught off guard. There's actually a website, Crypto Giving. And .ca, which actually shows half a dozen charities already in Canadian charities already accepting crypto gifts. Monthly giving, this is not new, but if you're not doing it, you really need to get on the bandwagon to do it. Podcasts are the new blogs and hybrid programming. So if it's in-person and virtual, this is here to say some people will be comfortable with doing virtual for a long time. Other people want that in person. So maybe you do a combination, but just making sure that you're staying flexible, but not moving away from what it is you're trying to actually acquire. 